Hey, Charlie Wooten from Lafayette, Louisiana. Here to tell you my story, how uh, I met James Southwell and all this came about. I was touring Australia last year in October and um, got home and a couple weeks later saw a really funny phone number on my phone that I didn't answer. I uh, got the message and it was James's father Tony calling me to see if I'd be interested in coming back to Australia to play with James. Uh, the funny thing is I looked up Tony's picture on Facebook and thought, huh, this is guy that's going to hire me to go all the way across the world. <laughs> but uh, we talked, we had some talks. Um, they had seen me at the Royal Southern Brotherhood. They liked what I did and uh, wanted me to come down and play with James. And I agreed to. And it was an incredible experience. Um, to go across the world and to meet up with someone you never ever met. I don't care how old you are, how long you've done this, it can be a little frightening. <laughs> Didn't know what to expect. And um, the minute I saw James, we hugged, had a three hour ride to Bounty. And um, as soon as I got to the house, there was nothing but love and, and family atmosphere, which is something I'm all about. Um, growing up in Louisiana, we go to festivals with your nieces and nephews and grandparents and cousins and everybody goes together. It's always a family affair. And that was the thing that I think attracted me most. James's music is incredible. He's, you know, already heard his stuff. I knew he was a great guitar player, great singer, all that stuff. But the family atmosphere and the love that I felt from the Southwell family is what really attracted me to the whole endeavor. Um, which I didn't know that was going to happen until I got there. Um, so when I got home, you know, we played Threadbow Festival really well. I got home and I kept telling my wife, I was like, how was it? I said, oh, the best part was hanging out with the family. Playing music, all oh, that's great, but just the love that was there. So, um, Tony called me and said, hey, I want James to come to the States for six weeks and visit Memphis and Nashville and New Orleans, and I was playing in Atlanta on James's birthday at Northside Tavern, my favorite place in the world to play, actually. And so James came to Atlanta. We played a, three shows together. Uh, he went to Nashville for a little while and then came down to New Orleans, hung out with me in New Orleans. We played the Maple Leaf. And uh, I said, you know, if he's coming to the state and he's going to be in Louisiana, I have access to the best musicians in New Orleans. And New Orleans is considered the mecca of musicians in the United States. It's the highest respect. You know, maybe New York City and L.A. might have their thing, but New Orleans has another thing. And uh, I said, you know, we should, let's do a CD, you know. And um, they had seen things I did with my brother Paul, my oldest brother, and Billy Pierce at Dockside, my favorite place to record. This, James's record is my sixth record I've been involved with here and um, the only thing I say about Dockside is I can't explain it you can't explain it you have to experience it the whole grounds you have a pool house you have a barn with a studio you have the Vermilion River which is behind me which I used to swim in when I was a little kid so uh, my high school sweetheart lived in the little town right down the street this is where I grew up. I grew up here. I come here, I feel at home, I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable. But once you get here, the rest of the world disappears. Everything disappears. And it gives you a focus like none other. If you listen right now to the bugs chirping, there's a groove going on. You're always in the pocket when you're here. So once you go into the studio, it's easy. You don't have to, you don't have to uh, adjust from, say, the city noise to the focus of playing music you're already in it you're already playing music before you even walk into the room it's amazing um, so in, in, in the team that I'm able to assemble with Doug Belote Mike Limler who played on this record I also use Keiko Kamaki Jason Ritchie I've used Daniel Groover 
they're all wonderful, wonderful people, which is just as important to the session. Not not only can they play as uh, they're, 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 they're pros, they're amazing musicians, but they're amazing people. And they bring a light to the session and the situation that's very important to me to bring that kind of uh, vibration and that energy besides just playing music. You know, we're creating. We're not just playing, we're creating. So you got to have a creative atmosphere. Um, Dave Farrell, the engineer on this record, amazing. Uh, he's 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 done a lot of my favorite records, and I don't even I didn't even know, you know. Um, and uh, Justin Tockett's another engineer here that's amazing. Um, so as going back to James, you know when he got. We, we had the experience in, in Australia. That's we started to get to know each other. But then when he got here, and we went to my house, and we sat. Well, actually, we started working on music in Atlanta. And we sat with the songs. And we went over every song. And, you know, I explained to him, you're coming to a place, the kind of music you, that you were first interested in, blues. Because he does a lot more than blues. Funk, folk. The, guy, the kid, he, I call him a kid. It's because I'm old. He's a 28-year-old young man. is amazing in whatever he writes, whatever he, comes from his heart. Um, as a matter of fact, he had a bunch of blues songs he wanted to do, and the, the, the album ended up having a couple folk tunes and a couple funk tunes that I felt was more James Southwell than anything, you know, for him to uh, express himself in many different ways. Um, but for this particular record, I explained to him, you're in Louisiana. These cats play different. You don't have to tell Doug Belote what to play. You ask Doug Belote what sh what kind of drum groove do you hear. Uh, you ask Mike Limler to put color, not to play a certain chord, but to make a certain color or just tighten it up or whatever it is. You know, you don't have to explain anything to them except what the vision it is you're looking for. Um, and Dave Farrell as an engineer was just as significant in that. He could hear things that sometimes I'd start to let something go and he'd be like, no, no, let's, let's get this just right, you know, in, in, a, in a very soft, beautiful way. And, um, and James just opened up to all the ideas. Um, if you've heard some of his recordings before and you hear some of these same songs, you're going to be like, wow, this is, this is a little different. He allowed these musicians to be them, which is very important. Now, it's the James Southwell CD. It's James writing. It's his singing. It's his guitar playing. But as a leader, you should allow, in my opinion, the people you're playing with to be them. So why call them? You know, I, I'll give you a quick story. I was doing my record a few years ago, and I was asking the guitar player to play like Oliver Wood. And I was like, hold on a second. Oliver's a friend of mine. I got on the phone and said, Oliver, can you come to the studio? And he was there in two hours. I didn't have to tell him what to play. I just asked him to lay down the guitar track, and boom, there it was. So that's a good example of letting musicians just be themselves, you know? And, um, man, we got some good stuff. Jason Ritchie, oh, my goodness. Forget about it. This guy's just, uh, just... We were already listening to the tracks that Jason played on, and we're going, man, this is great stuff. Oh, this is how great it sounds. And then Jason came on, and now I can't imagine the track without him. The, it, it just wouldn't be complete. He has a, He's the only harmonica I know that would play a solo and make it groove even more. Um, you know, it's just been an amazing experience. I could talk about this all day. Doug Belote, impersonator. Uh, joke teller, drummer, good friend, you know, all around. And all that stuff is important in the final product. You're going to hear all that in the pro final product, whether you realize it or not. When you listen to this CD and you feel good, if you've seen this interview, remember it's the love that went into it. It's not just a bunch of notes and this and that. It's the group of people that came together and created the feeling that you're having when you listen to that CD. And James is at the top of that heap of, of, of being the creator that we got to uh, come along with and, 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 and uh, follow his vision. And that's pretty awesome.
you know.